things with similar qualities naturally group together. For example, earthly materials fall downwards, and drops of water merge with each other. Air also seeks out more air, and only a strong force can separate them. Fire rises because it's drawn to its own element and spreads quickly to any slightly dry material, as there's nothing to stop it. In the same way, all creatures with intelligence are drawn to others like them. The more advanced a being is, the more it seeks out its own kind. We see this in animals, which form herds and care for their young, showing a form of love. Since animals have a soul, their bond is stronger than that found in plants or inanimate objects. Humans, too, come together in societies, friendships, and families, and even make peace during wars. Even stars, which are far apart, move together in harmony. As beings become more noble, their natural sympathy increases, even affecting distant things. However, rational beings seem to have lost this natural connection and don't come together as other creatures do. Yet, even when they stray, they find some way back to their own kind. God, humanity, and the world all produce results when the time is right. Although we often associate this idea with plants, it's also true that rational thought yields its own benefits for individuals and society, particularly when the insights gained are closely related to the original ideas. Offer constructive advice to someone causing harm and try to change their behavior if possible. If that fails, consider it a test of your patience, much like the gods who tolerate and sometimes even aid such individuals in health, reputation, and wealth due to their kindness. You can choose to act similarly if you wish, otherwise, what's stopping you? Don't work yourself to exhaustion as if you're seeking pity, or admiration. Instead, aim for one goal, to act or pause according to the dictates of collective wisdom. Today, I escaped all troubles, or more accurately, I cast them off because, in truth, they were never external but within my own perception. History repeats itself, with nothing new under the sun. Events are fleeting, and the substance of life is simple, much like it was in the days of our ancestors. External things exist independently, without knowledge or opinion of themselves. It is only our own minds that form judgments about them. For a rational and social being, the essence of good and bad lies in actions, not feelings. Thus, it's our deeds, not our emotions, that determine our happiness or suffering. For an inanimate object like a stone, it makes no difference whether it's thrown up or down, descending is no more harmful than ascending is beneficial. Taking a break from action, losing interest or changing opinions, and even feeling mentally exhausted isn't harmful. Consider the different stages of life, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and old age, each phase ending as the next begins. What's so frightening about that? Think about your life as it was in your grandparents' or parents' days. Reflect on all the changes and declines that have occurred. Ask yourself, is there really anything wrong with that? You'll realize that the end, the changes, and the complete transformation of your life are not as bad as you might think.